Have you heard about Pilopatia? It's a place located in India's Andaman and Nicobar Islands. Every election year, a polling station is set up here. And it's quite a task. The journey begins from Port Blair. Election officials first take a ship, then a speedboat, then another small dinghy, and finally, they take a hodi, a traditional boat used by the local tribe. This entire journey lasts almost 24 hours, and it's not just long, it's also pretty dangerous. The last leg is through mangrove swamps. It's infested with crocodiles. But the officials still make this journey. They carry voting machines with them. They're kept in waterproof boxes. Once the team reaches Pilopatia, they set up a polling booth for nine voters. That's right. They go through all of this just to reach nine voters. And this is the story of India's elections. It shows you the scale of the world's largest democratic exercise. India is going to polls next month, 28 states, 8 union territories, 968 million voters. It's a mammoth exercise, unmatched in scale and scope. So how big are India's elections? How will the world's largest democracy vote? How much will this election cost India? I'm Palki Sharma and this is Between the Lines. Twenty twenty four is a mega election year for the world. Nearly half the world's population will vote. That's four billion people. And almost a billion of them are here in India. This is the world's largest democracy, which makes this election the largest in the world. Voting will begin on April nineteenth. It will go on till June first. It will happen in a staggered manner. There will be a total of seven phases of voting. It will happen over forty four days. And this makes it the longest general election in India's history. In some states, voting will be done in one day. Others will vote in multiple phases. Bigger states like Uttar Pradesh, Bihar and West Bengal are voting in all seven phases. And the result of all of this will be announced on June 4th. Which brings us to the voters. 968 million people are eligible to vote in India. It's more than the combined population of Europe. It's also 150 million more than 2019. That's when India's last general election was held. 497 million are men, 471 million are women, 197 million young voters, 18 million first-time voters, 8.2 million over the age of 85, and 0 0.2 million centenarians. Then there are the non-resident Indians, or NRIs. They may live outside India, but they can also cast their vote. Together, these voters will elect 543 politicians to the Lok Sabha. That's the lower house of India's parliament, the Lok Sabha. 543 members of parliament or MPs. And the contenders belong to different parties. Six of them are national parties, 52 are state parties, and 2,301 are unrecognized. There is the ruling BJP, the Bharatiya Janata Party. They have been in power since 2014. In the opposition, there are several contenders. The biggest in the, is the Indian National Congress. Then there are regional stakeholders, like the Trinamool Congress, the Aam Aadmi Party, the Samajwadi Party, the DMK. Together, they form the India Bloc. It's an alliance of opposition parties. In 2019, 673 political parties participated in the election. 36 of them were able to win seats. The BJP-led NDA coalition secured a landslide victory. They won a record 353 seats. The Congress and its allies won 91 seats. This time, the BJP aims to further its gains. They're aiming for 400 seats. The last time a party won more than 400 seats was in 1984. It was the Congress party. That was right after the assassination of Indira Gandhi. Now, if the BJP wins this election, Narendra Modi will become India's Prime Minister for the third straight term. And when he completes this term, the third term, if he gets it, he will become India's third longest serving Prime Minister after Jawaharlal Nehru, who held office for 16 years and 9 months, and Indira Gandhi, who was in power for 15 years and 11 months. Which brings us to the voting. How will it happen? Voters will vote through EVMs, electronic voting machines. They were introduced in 1982. Voters press the button beside the candidate's name and party symbol. There's also the option of nota. None of the above. 
NOTA. In this election, over 5 million machines will be deployed in more than 1 million polling booths. They will be located across the country, some in very remote locations. We've already told you about the one in Andaman and Nicobar. There are many more like that. There's one booth at 15,256 feet. It's located in the state of Himachal Pradesh, the world's highest polling station. In 2019, a polling station was set up in the Gir Sanctuary, almost 70 kilometers inside the dense forest. So from the mountains of the Himalayas to the deserts of Rajasthan and the coasts of southern India, polling booths are set up everywhere, which means poll officials have a huge task at hand. Around 15 million polling staff will be deployed. This includes security personnel. Election Commission guidelines say every voter should be within two kilometers of a polling station. So officials will travel across India to make sure everyone can exercise their democratic right. In 2019, in one case, election voters traveled for four days, covering a distance of 482 kilometers to set up a polling station in Arunachal Pradesh. And they did this for just one voter. In Maoist infested areas, polling officials cannot even take cars. So they hike to set up booths. It's to give everyone an opportunity to vote. In 2014, the voter turnout was 66%. In 2019, it was around 67.4%, the highest ever in India's history. This year, it's expected to be more. And now the cost. An election this big will have a massive bill. By some estimates, this will be the world's most expensive election. It could cost anywhere between 10 to 15 billion dollars. That's more than the 2020 US election. This includes campaigning by political parties, expenditure towards offices, preparation of electoral rolls, charges for conducting elections, and issuing photo identity cards. So record numbers, record days of voting, and a record spending bill. These numbers reflect the staggering scale of India's election. But it's also the smaller ones that show the true picture, like the setting up of polling booths for just one voter, or trekking for four days to give people the right to vote. That's what a democracy is about, which brings me to you, the voter. Voting is a fundamental right. It's also a duty. Election day is the day to exercise your democratic right. It's not just any other national holiday. So go out and exercise that right. Cast your vote. It's the least you can do.